Good morning, everyone, and thank you for waking up with me on Up With India. Today, I'll be joined by 19-year-old Samantha Repass, Miss Delaware Teen USA, who's here to talk to me about her journey through it all and a lot of the lessons that she's learned along the way in this world of leadership that she's now landed herself in, bringing her on the show now. Samantha, how are you? I'm doing so well. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. Happy to have you here. Um, I really am just excited about what the Miss Delaware Teen USA and Miss Delaware USA uh, pageant title means. And it, it really empowers young women like yourself and even other young women that look up to you and say, one day I wish I could be in that position um, and to be a leader in my own community. What was something that you learned later on in the pageant uh, life or the pageant world that you didn't know before deciding to take this um, take this step into this uh, this new world. So something that I have really learned and have so much appreciation for is just it's very common and I just think it's so important to be true to who you are. I know that we are told that growing up, especially as women, it is so important to be individual and to embrace who you are. But that is something that is really just spoken volumes as I have been able to fulfill this opportunity as Miss Delaware Teen USA 2020. And I love being able to be who I am, share my authentic self with the members of my community and the global community. I love being able to let people see a little bit of me um, and a new, a new side of me and just kind of staying true to me and making sure that I always am authentic and sharing as most as I can to really value and show people that I can relate to them and that they're just as important. Mm -hmm. I think in any competition or anything that you're running for or trying to be a part of, whether it's an organization, I think that authenticity goes a long way. And typically that's what people want to see because when there are so many uh, beautiful young women to choose from, you know, if we're just going to look at beauty, then that's really hard, you know, a hard, um, um, decision maker. But when you factor in other things like oratory, I know that's some of the things that you do practice for. Talk mm -hmm. to me about that. You know, a lot of people don't know how much goes into yes. preparing <laughs> for a pageant. I have a few friends that have went through a uh, pageantry and have won titles. And I remember, you know, just watching them have to go through training, you know, mm -hmm. hours and hours of training. So talk to me about what or were some of the things that went into your training process. Yes, it is not an easy practice. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears go into training. It is just like anything else that you want to, you want to be as your, your best self. Mm -hmm. You want to practice, you want to invest so much time into it, and especially if you're passionate. And I think being passionate is something that is, that is going to lead you to success. So I have loved all my training hours and a lot has um, happened. So I've been able to meet with quite a few pageant coaches and my amazing director, Vincenza, is always right there by my side. And basically we work in interview training, we work in walking and I have a nutritionist and there's there's so many, I have a joy and wellness to just make a coach that just makes sure that I am feeling my best mentally because sometimes that is um, not as important or the thing that you go to, but being strong mentally is just as important as physically. So I have so many of these amazing women to coach me along this process. And each individual step is just as important because it all fills in the big picture. And training goes from hours and it's a lot of work, a lot of sweat, but I love going and uh, working with my coaches and training because it is a learning process. And I am so grateful for the opportunities that um, I've been able to have. So there is a lot of process. There is a lot of training that goes into it. And it's a lot of work and a lot of stuff that you have to do on your own. Yes, you go to practice and you work with these amazing women as your coaches. But also on the flip side at home, you have to do I walk all the time. I practice my walk when I'm walking around the neighborhood or if I'm in the grocery store, I'm always constantly walking and spinning and just trying to get better is my main goal. And I I always practice speaking and just being more comfortable with who I am and being comfortable in my own skin. It's really important to practice in the studio, but also at home. 
What part of the competition would you say was most difficult for you that you've conquered and you were really proud of yourself for? So I think I would say it would be the interview. It's definitely the most nerve wracking. You're a little anxious, but it's overall exciting because it really is an opportunity to let the judges know who you are. You, it's just a conversation with people that want to learn about you. So all you get to do is just talk about yourself, which is so fun. (laughs) And it's just, it's, I love the opportunity and I'm happy that I was able to conquer it with just being true to myself again, and also just using the time to meet somebody new and let them know who I am and what I stand for. Mm -hmm. With everything going on in the world right now, we have a pandemic, we have a social rights issues. There's so much happening, uh, Samantha. Talk to me about what your platform was when you decided to run for this and what was something that meant a lot to you that you wanted to work on or or join uh, hands and arms and lock arms with the community in in achieving and, and getting done. So my platform is entitled The Value of Volunteering. I am very passionate about giving back to my community. And from a very young age, it has been instilled in me on the importance of helping others um, in my community. And that is something that I think that everybody should become involved in. It is just a wonderful thing to do. To me, that's what I believe. And I think it is so rewarding to help people. You get to build relationships, you meet new people, and everybody is just really values your time that you that you spend there. So I have been able to use my year and just my life to speak about the importance about volunteering and giving back to your community. I love joining organizations and going to fundraisers that support uh, members of my community. It is just so important to lift each other up and stay united and just work together. You said a lot about, you know, volunteering and giving back, but what does that look like for you in terms of actual things that people could, let's say they wanted to support you and join you in this work. Uh, What does that work look like in the communities that you want to reach out to? So one of the most passionate volunteer opportunities that I have been a part of is the Meals on Wheels of Delaware. I am able to deliver meals to seniors in my community. Every Thursday, I deliver a hot meal, and I absolutely adore them. I have the same route, so I get to see the same smiling faces every week. And I've actually been able to build connections, build relationships with these members of my community that I value so much that I hope will last a long, long time because it is so important to me to, again, just meet people and hear other stories of, I love just listening and seeing different sides and people's backgrounds. So I really value the time that I'm able to spend with them when I go and just deliver them a meal. Some of them live by themselves. So when I come and see them, they just appreciate somebody to talk to and have an ear to listen to if they have anything to speak about. Mm -hmm. So that is a fabulous organization that I highly recommend everybody look into if they're interested because it really is just the basic of giving back to the community. So that has been something that I'm very passionate about and have loved to be able to be a part of. Mm, 19 years old. Wow. So you are young and you're already like, I'm ready to take over the world. I'm ready to do business. Uh, You're from Louis, Delaware, right? And so what is life like down there? I can't say that I've visited, so I don't know much. But talk to me about what life, life is like and was like kind of growing up for you as a young woman. Oh, absolutely. I am so grateful for my childhood. I do live in Lewis, Delaware, so it's in the southern part of Delaware, and I live about two minutes from the beach, and I am a complete beach girl. (laughs) I have grown up here with my brother and my sister, and our summers we spend biking to the beach with our parents and meeting up with friends and family there. I love the beach and the beautiful beaches. I will speak about any time of the day because they're just so beautiful. And I just love going and spending my time at the beach. It's very therapeutic to me. But growing up in this small community has really grounded me and it has made me who I am. My parents are small business owners here in my town, along with so many others. It really has the small town charm. And I can't, it makes me sad to think about leaving it. And when I will go to college, and but I I love the town. Everybody 
knows each other. It's a, a great sense of community. Everybody's really supportive of each other. So I'm really fortunate for the town that I've grown up in. Well, most definitely. And just by listening to you, I can tell that you had a pretty, you know, well-rounded childhood, you know, tight knit. It sounds like you yes. were very you know, fortunate, which is really awesome. Uh, and when we look at the scope of the world and different teens um, that you actually represent right now, because you're yeah. Miss Delaware Teen USA, which means you represent teens all across uh, Delaware that may come from different backgrounds mm -hmm. and have different issues that they face in life. So talk to me a little bit about how you relate to uh, the teens that you, you are now leading and um, what are some of the top issues that they are worried about um, and that you are, are vocal about? So it is important to me to relate to as many people as I can. And as I am the, the Miss Delaware Teen USA, I want, I want to be able to be an ear for them to reach out to me. I have been very vocal about, you know, I am open to your talks or any opportunities that you may have. If anybody loves to, I know prior to the, prior to the um, pandemic, mm -hmm. I loved meeting people and just going out and seeing everyone because I, I, I love seeing the diversity. I love seeing the different backgrounds and hearing different people talk about what's important to them. So I really speak about also just staying true to yourself. And I really just want to be a voice for all the boys and girls across the state of Delaware to empower them and encourage them so that they can reach their full potential. They can shoot for the stars and succeed because everybody can succeed. And I am very passionate about representing the teens and just the youth in my state. What is the biggest stereotype that you felt like you broke uh, when you decided to be a part of pageantry? Like I said, most people look at uh, a pageant or, or women that um, compete in pageants and they say, oh, they're superficial. Oh, all they care about is beauty. They don't care mm -hmm. about anyone else but themselves. But I know that's not true, right? Mm -hmm. And you know that's not true. What were some of the biggest stereotypes that you felt like you broke while being a part of uh, this process? So that when I hear people say their stereotypes or what they think a you know a typical pageant girl is, you know it it is so the opposite. And this is nothing but a sisterhood that empowers each other. And I am so grateful to be in this and um, have an opportunity to be a sister and be a queen, especially during this time. I think one of the biggest stereotypes is that you don't have to be a certain way. You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to speak a certain way. You can just be you. And it is so important to not change yourself. People will tell you their opinions. People will tell you what you should and you shouldn't do. But it's so important for you to just know what's best for you and stay to true to yourself because you do not have to change for anybody. And I think that's really important for everybody to know that you do not have to be a a specific way. There's no mold that there is a perfect pageant girl. There's nothing that you have to fit. You just have to be you. Mm -hmm. Speaking of perfect pageant girl, do you feel like there's a lot of pressure to be perfect or to not make any mistakes? Now that you hold this title, all eyes are on you. Do you, do you still feel like you can be a regular teenager and do regular teenage things? Because I know when I was a teenager, I was doing things that weren't so smart um, <laughs> and getting in a little bit of trouble, right? And so does it kind of stop you from just hanging out and being a teenager? So there is quite a bit of responsibility holding a title of a state and a national title. And so there is responsibility, but I, you know, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I have loved this opportunity. If anything, I think it's helped me grow into a young woman and it has really empowered me. I don't believe that I, you know, am, there's nothing that I'm really missing out. I'm, I, t I do, I do get told that I'm a goody goody, but <laughs> there's nothing really that I'm like, Oh my gosh, I just need to do this. That would completely betray my title. There's nothing, there's nothing like that. So, but there is quite a responsibility that you do have to hold. There's a professionalism and it is really taught me so much and like I said to just be a professional to be to meet people and um, so that has really helped me grow into a, a young professional woman.
Mm-hmm. You know, there's a quote that I like, and that's probably because I'm the complete opposite of you. I am not cookie cutter. <laughs> and so there's a quote that I like, and it says, uh, well-behaved women uh, seldom make history. And um, to your point, it's I don't think that that saying is more so that women that get out you know, in the world and do terrible things are the ones that make history. No, no, no. no. I think that quote really says it's the women that aren't afraid to have a voice in a room where there are people that believe that women shouldn't have a voice. Have you ever been in a situation like that where you felt like your voice was stifled and there was something that was um, important for you to speak on and you took that leap of faith to speak on it? So like you said, it is so important to have a voice. And if you want to make history, it is just just speaking what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I have had some situations where it has been a little nerve wracking or I've been timid to share my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I think the best advice that I could give is do you know, this is this is who you are. Again, at the end of the day, you are you. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it's important to share what you what you believe, and stand up for who you believe and what you believe in. And I believe that using your voice as a platform can be so encouraging and it can motivate other people. When I see other women standing up for what they believe in, I just want to be like them and I want to, and I want to do the same and I want to inspire people. So although I've maybe not had some experiences where I've been told, no, you cannot speak about this or no, you cannot talk about this. I think it is so important to make sure you share your voice because I have had instances where, you know, with, with peers and, or in school and people say, you know, you're wrong just for thinking a certain way. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to hear both sides. To me, I love hearing different opinions and sculpting my own. I don't let other people tell me what I should and shouldn't believe. I like to take all the information and kind of make my best judgment on based off of my beliefs. Mm. And I think it's really important to do that for, especially as young women and just stand up for what we believe in. Who are some women in history that you look up to? Oh, great question. So I, (laughs) so I would say, hmm, hmm. I know it's hard because there's so many. <laughs> there are there's so many. You stumped me on this one. Um, there are so many women that have just really paved the way for the rest of us to have the opportunities that we have today. And I think it is so important to always look back and see how far we've come. And if you think if you think back to what some women that had to go through and the lives that we're able to live, um, I feel very grateful for all the women that have paved the way for us to be where we are today. Mm -hmm. Where do you plan on going tomorrow? We talked about where we are today, but where do you plan on going tomorrow? Where is this journey in pageantry in Miss Delaware Teen USA? Where is this taking you? Where do you want your legacy to lead you? So I hope to continue speaking about the importance of volunteering and giving back to your community. I hope to continue being a voice for the youth in Delaware and hopefully the nation. Mm. And I hope to keep making waves and bringing attention and encouraging people to stay motivated and reach their goals and push for goals and see, you know, if I always like to say, you know, if it, if, if I can attain it, then it, it's not big enough. I have to dream bigger. And so I always like to keep pushing myself. And I think that's important. And I always hope that I can encourage people to succeed and really just relate and speak to people who, who need an ear to just want somebody to listen to or speak to. And I just really hope to encourage people to value the importance of volunteering and giving back. What's the message of encouragement that you would send the young women that are watching this right now, Mm -hmm. that are looking at you and saying, she's way too pretty. I'm not pretty enough. Or she's this, she's that, and I'm not that. What do you say to the to those young women that very well do have those thoughts, but we know that that's not true, that they can, um, you know, achieve great things. But what's your message to them, Samantha? I would say you are enough. And I have battled with that statement. And you always think that you're not good enough and you see other people and you want to constantly be, you know, you want to 
you think you can do better. But I think it is so important to just know that you're enough and to be you. You know, we're all individually unique and that's what makes us so beautiful. And we're all so different. And I think it's so important to stay true to yourself and embrace who you are because that is what makes you beautifully unique. Thank you so much, Samantha, for joining me on this episode. I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful opportunity. I really appreciate being here. And thank you to all of you for watching Up With India. That wraps us for today, but I want to see you tomorrow morning. So join me back here on Up With India on WITN 22 World.